Um, I'd like to draw you out a little further on uh, the subject of the composition of the, uh, of the Earl Grey players. What do you recall about the uh, development of the group as the Earl Grey Festival developed from those uh, uh, isolated performances of Twelfth Night in 1946 mm. and 47 uh, into the, uh, the full-blown festival of 1957 and 58. How many people um, stayed with the festival? How many formed the core or nucleus of the company? Uh, and what people came and went? And how did their, um, uh, how did, uh, how did the company um, interact with each other socially? Yeah, okay, well, um, we talk about the corporate culture. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know that's a business management uh, phrase, but I think it's relevant here uh, because every organization does have a culture. Um, and uh, I think the festival had a very, very positive culture. Uh, as did in you have all a well defined one? Uh, yeah, I, I, I felt it did. Mm -hmm. um, all, all corporate cultures stem from the top from the chief executive officer, and father was that. Uh, he had certain attitudes and certain ways of behaving which filtered through and uh, helped to form this co corporate culture. And, and one was uh, a deep respect for everybody. Uh, that came through in, in the way people uh, acted and reacted. Uh, uh, a, um, a complete um, uh, refusal to allow uh, any political advantage to come in. In other words, if, if people, which they normally do in, in groups, there's always politics involved, somebody trying to get somewhere ahead of somebody else. That was always squelched out. Uh, he never would allow that. He'd never give it oxygen. Mm -hmm. And um, so, it, it, of course, it happens, but, uh, but it was at a minimal level. <clears throat> and um, uh, I think people were willing to cooperate. I've, I've noticed uh, many times in the makeup, uh, we, we used to always get made up in the buttery uh, underneath, uh, oh. and, uh, and, and some knew how to do it better than others, uh, especially the new ones coming in, they didn't know too much. Uh, but you always have uh, older actors um, yeah, willing to show the, the guy how to put a beard on and all of that sort of thing. So there's a lot of cooperation. And um, um, usually um, after a performance, um, quite a number of people would go to the, uh, that bar, or uh, it, called, it was called the Chez Paris, it no longer exists, but it's on Bloor, it was on Bloor Street at the, uh, at the end of Philosopher's Walk as it hits Bloor Street. There's a, a little bar called, um, uh, and a restaurant I suppose, called the Chez Paris, and everybody, would, uh, sometimes uh, you know, 10, 15 people uh, would go there and, and, and have some drinks after the performance and all speak about it. Uh, and there was, a, uh, there was a, 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 an atmosphere of enthusiasm. Uh, everybody felt they were doing something important. Uh, well, not just acting, they were doing something important. And, uh, and everybody loved Shakespeare. Uh, so often the conversation would revolve around the parts and the interactions between the characters. Often lines were quoted uh, to illustrate a particular point that somebody was making. Uh, uh, there was a very yeasty uh, social atmosphere that, that was created uh, in the company. And uh, there was a spirit of egalitarianism, and this is, comes from the, the non-celebrity, non-star type um, approach. Uh, because it was an egalitarian thing. It, it, you'd have people playing principal roles that, that um, would freely interact with walk-on people or people that would only speak one or two lines. Uh, so you didn't, you didn't have any haughtiness there. It was a, it was a, a very positive um, uh, atmosphere and a, and a really good uh, corporate culture. And I know, I know how, it, <clears throat> how it happened. It, it happened because the father made it happen. Who were the mainstays of the group, apart from your parents? There was, of course, your father and your mother. Well, big actor, but Sandy Webster, uh, was, was, they, they all came out after. I mean, the early ones would be uh, um, Lauren Green and John Draney. They were big figures. Bob Christie uh, was a big figure. He played an excellent Petruchio. Really first class. He, Robert Christie? Robert or Christie. Lauren Green. Because I, I know that Lauren Green was Petruchio in yeah. 1948. That's right. Yeah. But and Christie played it too. But Robert Christie played it as well. Yeah, okay. he did. He was very dynamic, uh, very extroverted 
sort of strong character. And Did, he was uh, good. His wife, his wife was very good too, Margot. She played Kate. Mm -hmm. Did your parents socialize a lot with the Christies? No, my parents never socialized much with anybody. Oh, really? Yeah, and okay. that was one of the difficulties I think they faced. Uh, um, uh, mother had had a um, uh, you know prickly personality at times, and um, and 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 father was very reserved. He was a shy man, uh, and I I think I'm pretty sure that that uh, he would have been better <clears throat> accepted by the Canadian theatrical community if he'd gone out drinking with them. Uh, but he would never do that. Um, they oh, they no. would they would all or actors normally like to have a drink or two and get together socially, but he would never do that. Um, so that the social structure of the group really uh, really revolved around performances. It was really these yes. sort of these conf con confluences yeah. Yeah. after performances and, and After performances, but my parents never participated in that. Okay, really. Um, they went home. And uh, uh, what about uh, people like I'm thinking of um, Lillian and Charles Palmer, uh, Palmer, yeah, and um, uh, and sort of other other mainstays of the <coughs> festival, uh, the uh, the designer um, and costumer, uh, 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 Mabel Letchford. Mabel yes. Letchford. Yeah. She never had a first name. It was always Mrs. Letchford. Always Mrs. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, uh, they she were of course a, 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 involved with the group. An amusing looking woman. She was very. Very portly and and had several chins and a big thick lips. Uh, she was quite a formidable looking woman. Um, were there uh, uh, were there relationships? With, uh, uh, was there participation? Did their participation in the festival uh, result from uh, encountering your parents in social uh, environments? Elsewhere, no, they, the parents uh, they weren't really social people at all. It, uh, I mean, mother would would. would uh, would be would socialize, but would always be for a purpose, such as um, oh. um, you know, getting people involved. It wasn't a, a friendship type of those. They didn't really have uh, many friends. Uh, uh, as friends, uh, they were always if if they were friendly, they, they always had some relationship with the festival. Charles Palmer comes to mind. He mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> he played a pivotal role in the success of the of the festival. Uh, as you you know that. Um, all the scenery was made in our basement, and, uh, um, and, and Charles Palmer uh, and my father actually made all the scenery. I'd, when I got old enough, I, I was in there too, so the three of us would, would be down in the basement making scenery, um, and uh, it would always end around about 10.30 at night, and then we go upstairs to the kitchen, and Father would cook us some bacon and eggs, uh, and that was the reward for, <laughs> <laughs> for two and a half hours of <coughs> carpentry. <laughs> and uh, and Charles was an enormous supporter. He always wanted to be an actor, and he wasn't. He had no training, uh, no formal training in in the theater at all. And uh, and years went by, and he was the stage manager, of course, the head of the lighting, he, uh, and it helped make the. The, um, uh, the, the scenery, and then all of a sudden, um, a father asked him, do you want to play, I think it was Dogbury the, that he first played, mm -hmm. do, you want to, do you want to play? And, and Charles said, oh, I don't know if I can. He, always, he really wanted to, but he was a little bit afraid, but uh, father persuaded him to play it, and, and he did such a good job that he went on and became a mainstay of the comedies. Uh, were many of the members of the troop people uh, that your father knew through the Arts and Letters Club? Yes. Yeah, I can't remember who specifically, but he had a very close relationship with the Arts and Letters Club. Big supporter of it, believed mm -hmm. in it, mm -hmm. and uh, they liked him. Uh, in fact, everybody liked my father. Uh, he was he was quite popular, but but he was not a hail fellow, well met sort of a guy. He wouldn't go drinking with people, and and that produced a certain barrier, I suppose, mm -hmm. an air barrier between him and everybody else. But some, somebody to that, they liked him because he was modest, he was, had a good sense of humor, he was friendly enough. Were there, um, uh, did your, were your parents religious people? Did they attend a church? Uh, father was not religious, mother was. Uh, she, she would go to church um, every Sunday. Were there um, uh, any social connections that uh, happened through church that influenced the development no. of the festival group? Not that I was aware of. No. 
No. Well, possibly, I, I, I think, um, I mean, mother was a Christian scientist, and, and I think um, there was a woman um, uh, married to a wealthy stockbroker who was also a Christian scientist, and, and I think that, uh, uh, you know, they became friendly, and I, I, they may, it may have resulted in some small financial contribution, but I, I wouldn't be certain of that. Um, Lillian Palmer had charge of the summer theater yes. school. Yes. And that operated uh, for how many years? Three, four years? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Uh, in tandem with the Earl Grey Festival. What are your yeah. recollections of the school? Well, I never, I never went to the school, and um, I, I've never seen them operate. But I understand it was it was uh, successful. Lillian Palmer uh, had theatrical training under like Charles, and, um, and she was encouraged to set up this, this school because we wanted to, to uh, um, uh, broaden the scope of the festival, make it fill more spaces than, the, than just the obvious one. Mm -hmm. and, the, um, and, and it was thought that if, if that school were really successful, it could be like a farm team, produce actors that could graduate into the festival. I, mm -hmm. uh, it, it wasn't bad. I, I don't think it fulfilled its its original purpose in the sense of being a farm team that much. But but it was it was wor definitely worthwhile. Um, I seem to recall that uh, two uh, days of the week uh, had uh, uh, classes in acting. Do you recall um, what sort of style of actor training? Was done, uh, or did you uh, did you ever experience what sort of actor training was given in and through those um, those periods? I think I think it would be um, a traditional style. There was a um, a theatrical um, um, educator, if you like, at that time called Sterndale Bennett, who played a very important role in the development of Canadian theatre. Uh, um, I I went to his school, and. Uh, where was his school? In well, it's in Toronto somewhere. I can't remember exactly where. Oh, okay. uh, Sterndale Bennett. Sterndale, Sterndale Bennett. Um, he would um, he taught um, elocution and, and speaking, and his wife taught movement. She had a ballet background. Do you recall her name? I don't remember her name. No. no. Oh, that could be bad. That's that's extremely interesting. But but he uh, he. Um, <clears throat> he, he's, he taught in the, in the traditional way, not, not the method way. Um, he taught uh, proper diction, proper speaking, speaking from the diaphragm, mm -hmm. all of that sort of thing, giving meaning across. Uh, uh, he would be on all fours with my father in terms of attitude towards proper the drama. Proper elocution, appropriate gesture. Yes, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Um, Makeup. Tell us a little bit about the makeup technique that was yeah. taught in the Well, school. we were sort of left to fend for ourselves on the makeup side. Uh, um, nobody was really taught. I mean, you just uh, it was grease looked paint to see makeup, what other it? people did and copy them. But it was grease paint, too, wasn't it? Oh, grease paint. Oh, yeah. You put, you put a layer of um, a cold cream on first, and mm -hmm. then you put the grease paint on after that, and then you put the eyeliners on, and it... And it uh, if you had a beard, you'd, you'd put the spirit gum on. Dreadful stuff. It stung. <laughs> it really stung. And then you'd apply the beard in, in little layers to, to make it into one, and, or the mustache and whatever. And then at the end of the, um, of the play, you had to take it all off, which was a bit of a chore, because you could never really get the color out of your face. And often it would go up into your hairline, and, <laughs> and you'd, put the, you'd have to put more cold cream on to get it off, and never really quite came off. And I hated it. I, I,